The visiting Egyptian opera star Ashraf Sawalem surely is a man of many parts. The bass baritone is here to sing in the role of the assassin in the latest New Zealand Opera Company production of Rigoletto. He's also known throughout the Arab world as the voice of Mickey Mouse and other Disney cartoon characters. He was heavily involved in the spring uprising in Cairo and last month here in New Zealand he also managed to be the first person anywhere in the world to cast a vote in the current Egyptian election. So there's plenty to talk about when Ashraf Sawalem meets Selwyn Manning. Uh, welcome to the program, Ashraf. Welcome, Selwyn. In preparation for this interview, uh, I was thinking, where can I start? You know, look down the list here. Um, you're an opera singer. Uh, you're the voice of Mickey Mouse in Arabic. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're an academic. Yes. Uh, a political activist in the Arab Spring. And I was kind of thinking, which way do we go in this? You know, where do we go first? And I thought, let's, let's take us back to uh, what was developing in, in, in Egypt um, a couple of years ago, which made you want to get involved with this, um, this Arab Spring protest? Well, we, we, uh, my generation basically was, has, has resigned to complete apathy about the, the politics in Egypt and, and any hope for changing uh, the regime. And, and I had moved out to the United States and studied there and started an international career, even though I was uh, reasonably successful in Egypt. And uh, uh, just we were completely taken by surprise. Uh, last, last time I was in Egypt in uh, uh, January 2011, I was performing the Magic Flute in Egyptian translation okay. at yeah. the Alexandria Library. And we felt it in the air a little yeah. bit. Not that there was a revolution coming, but there was a level of desperation that we haven't seen before. And that's from the people themselves. Yes. Um, was there a response from the authorities at that stage as well? The authorities had, it, the power I think of the last uh, parliament had completely gone to their heads and they were getting away with murder literally mm -hmm. and so much corruption that they they forgot to keep you know themselves checked. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and once that happens and once the public, the general public have nothing to lose, it's it's the recipe for for people to revolt. So you're a performer. You come from the yes. arts. Um, culture is a big part of your background and your interest and your DNA, if you like. Um, how did you get involved with this um, activism? That, that uh, I, I'm not actually special. Everybody got involved. I, well, I've been back to Egypt four times since the revolution. I didn't attend the first 18 days on Tahrir Square, but I became heavily involved in the activism in uh, in New York. So I was in all the demonstrations at the UN and the um, Egyptian consulate. And the biggest one, of course, was at Times Square, right. where uh, I, uh, I sang you know, the national anthem. I became sort of the de facto national anthem singer. Yeah, t t <laughs> t t tell us about that. Um, what was the reaction in New York from the people, um, fr from the city itself, and, and from the political mm. kind of apparatus as well? Everybody was so supportive. Uh, the, the revolution actually has, has inspired so many uh, anti-establishment demonstrations in America, anti-Republicans and anti-corporates. Uh, there was a big thing in Minnesota about uh, uh, unions, uh, teachers' unions and teachers' rights. Uh, so, I mean, everybody was saying, you know, let's do like the Egyptians. Same happened in Spain. So, it's a very, it, you know, even though it started, Arab Spring started in Tunisia, the, the, the inertia of, of the Egyptian revolution is the one that really pushed everything through and inspired uh, many, many places in the world. So you see a connection between what we are witnessing in the North African area and the Middle East, um, where people are wanting to get involved yeah. with change and progressing their cultures and their societies. You're yes. seeing a correlation between that and the established uh, you know, power like the United States as well. Yes, absolutely. And we had, we had Occupy Wall Street, of course, which mm. until today is going on. Uh, it was moved to Union Square in New York. It was you know, a damn nuisance for the corporations. And, but, uh, you know, people, we, we still have so much to lose in America. You know, we still have, so, you know, quite a few, you know, quite a bit of real freedom and, and prosperity, not like the Middle East where people have lost everything. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, very quickly over the, the eight years of, of George W. Bush, you know, that the education was eviscerated, the, 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 the middle class was heavily undermined. So more and more people are waking up to that. And, uh, you know, and the corporations don't want that. So if we see the advent of change in, in Egypt, uh, what kind of change can you actually pick up, perhaps, as a momentum inside the United States? 
the change is, is going to come as long as you sort of keep pushing for it. Uh, uh, you know, people belittle the fact that, you know, you have a couple of hundred hanging out in, in, in Union Square and, you know, those hippie, loonies, idealistic. And no, it actually sort of puts it in the face of the world that change needs to be talked about and, and needs to be initiated. And President Obama has been working mm -hmm. very hard on that. But, you know, the, the Bush administration had dug us so deep into a ditch and took the whole world along with it, not only just, just America, that it's, we, you know, we're, we're digging ourselves out very slowly, but we're not anywhere near mm. the, you know, mm. the rim, mm. if and, you will. And if we, we go back to Egypt, um, from yeah. what you could see back then, um, <coughs> did you ever believe that the, the uprising would actually lead to uh, a more open and democratic process in Egypt? It's it's not as open as it as it should be. It's like it's very much like right now. It's a hoard, like it's a hoarder, a house that is full of trash. And now the time to clean up, it looks much worse than having all that trash compacted in and the door closed on it. You weren't aware of it. Mm. Now when you open the door, it's going to look messy for a while. Mm. You know mm. until you clean up. Mm. Right now we have the mess just strewn all over the mm. place, trying to to sort through what to keep and what to throw away. Mm. And of course. Every <coughs> a, a political and ideological power is, is trying to jump on the revolution and, and, and get hold of power. And of course, we, uh, we had the, the first round of presidential elections with 13 candidates. And I was very proud to have yes. been the first in the world yes. to vote. W because you're in New Zealand at the time. Because I'm in New Zealand. Yeah. And I was the first one in, in, in the embassy. At the time, I was in Wellington. I was the first ballot in the box. And I, I made a huge you know, uh, uh, celebration about it. How, how it did you celebrate it? I, I just tweeted, I tweeted, I was yeah. so, I was crying actually so hard at, at, at the, 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 the poignancy and the significance of the moment that it's the first time in my life and I'm, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, my, in my early 40s that my, my, my vote is going to count. I've never voted before, ah. except for the parliament, of course, a couple of months before that. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was, and to be the first one to do that, to vote in an election where we don't know that's something to sing about. Beforehand, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Beforehand, who's going to win? Yes. Of course, the surprise was disastrous, you know, who, who, who actually won the, the top two slots where we're going to do the runoffs because the, the, the most radical representative of the Muslim Brotherhood and the worst representative of the old regime, the old guard, he was actually uh, uh, the, 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 the secular candidate, who was nothing but secular. I mean, his, his, all, his, his military establishment through and through he was Mubarak's last prime minister who presided over uh, the, the, the killing uh, and the shooting of the revolutionaries in, in Tahrir Square mm. in, in, in early February. Okay, if we take that then, um, this current situation, if you look out one year, two years, what do you expect to see and what do you hope to see in, in Egypt? What, I, what I'm hoping to see is that the, the liberal forces learn from, from, that, from that lesson because you look everywhere in the world, liberals rarely get to power because, you know, by definition, we are divided. We, up, we, we uh, uphold and embrace the, the, the uh, pl pl pluralism and, and diversity of, of opinion. So, you know, we only get to power as a reaction to the blunders committed by conservatives. <laughs> and, but, you know, hopefully the, the, the liberals in Egypt will learn from the lesson and they will all coalesce around one party and then they would have a voice in the next yes. election, you know, for uh, four or five years from now. See, so, uh, of course, since the um, Arab Spring became an, an advent, you know, uh, an event that um, the, the world was looking at, we've seen the Gaddafi Libya um, yeah. regime fall. Um, we've seen uh, unrest in Tunisia. Yes. Um, we've seen in Bahrain, mm -hmm. uh, and of course in Yemen. Yes. Uh, the North African <coughs> states seem to all be responding to this, and we, we, we are seeing obviously the atrocities. Um, up in Syria at the moment. Yeah. Once again, if you were looking out a year, what what do you see there? Do you think the aspirations of the rising of the people's want is going to be satisfied? Or? It's going to be different depending on the region. I mean, depending on the country and the makeup of the country. For example, actually, an, an, a nice light at the end of the tunnel is looming for Algiers because Algiers had, you know, this whole bloodbath yes. to cleanse Islamists out of politics. Uh, you know, they, and very much like most repressed uh, regimes where the majority is illiterate uh, or ill-educated and poor, 
most people run to sort of religion as a, as a political refuge and they vote for Islamists not knowing that they, they're voting against their own interest. And what happened in Algiers, if you remember, you know, uh, I don't know if it's what, about, about a decade ago or so, the, the Islamists won by a landslide and then the military had a coup and, and all yes. the whole thing and then Algiers just plunged into this yes. bloodbath. And now they're having actually a, you know, a good, balanced, secular uh, uh, parliament with a lot of women in it. And I'm hoping that all of us look at Algiers and realize that we shouldn't repeat that mistake by voting for religious dogma and bringing it into politics because it's, it's just, it, you can never take it out except, you know, with losing a lot of lives. You know, Saudi Arabia is run by religion, uh, Iran is run by religion or political religion, and they're, they're really not happy places to be part of. And of course, you're here in New Zealand to perform in Rigoletto. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's coming up in Auckland at the uh, ASB Theatre on Thursday evening. It's yes. The first performance in Auckland. Uh, tell me a bit about your character, this assassin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rigoletto as a production, actually, by the, the direction by Lindy Hume is, is very, uh, very significant to what's been going to it, you know, in, in, in the hallways of power because it's a story about getting away with murder. It's a, it's a story about getting away with corruption. The story has been updated to uh, the Berlusconi uh, mm -hmm. yeah. ministry, and uh, you'll see that. And uh, it's it's an amazing set with the the halls of power, the big gilded doors and and palace, sort of flying out and hovering over what's happening to all the have-nots. So you have all the haves, and all the have-nots, uh, with with the power hovering over them mm -hmm. and manipulating their lives. Uh, I'm, I'm a hired assassin. I'm one of the ha one, one of the mm -hmm. have-nots, but I'm, a, I'm an assassin with a conscience. Yeah. So there's, so there's a, a complex layer. It's a huge, yes, it's, yeah. a, it's a huge conflict because I, I use my sister, who is a prostitute, to lure my, you know, the people I'm supposed to kill yes. uh, into my bar in this particular context. It's usually an inn or something, and I kill them. Yeah. Except That's the method of murder. <laughs> Was they giving something away? We'll keep, I mean, well, we, we, have, we have a pistol and we have a knife, and I'll, I'll keep it... Uh, keep it open there. I'll keep it open for the, for the audience to come. I, I understand see. it was a success in Wellington, so Aucklanders can... Oh, we had full houses all four nights, and uh, actually the Auckland uh, in, uh, performance in IOTA Center is going to be the first time, the first show in the space after the renovations. Ah, okay. So, Apparently, we have a much friendlier space for singing because, of course, we sing without microphones. So the acoustics are better. Yes, the acoustics are much, much better. And uh, it's been renovated, so it's going to be a beautiful space to, uh, to, to, to perform in for both us, the performers, and the audience. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Okay, um, so are you able to um, give a bit of a demonstration of this bass baritone that you'll be bringing to the stage? <laughs> there, there's the very little in my role that is extractable, yes. uh, so I'm, I'm probably going to sing something uh, from uh, Old Man River, uh, Old Man River from Showboat, uh, just a couple of phrases. Oh, that, that is wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Ash. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you for having me. Old Man River, that old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling along. He don't plant taters, he don't plant cotton, but them that plant are soon forgotten. But old man river, he just keeps rolling along. Thank you very much. Thank you. Selma Manning was talking to Ashraf Sawellam, currently starring in the latest New Zealand Opera Company production of Rigoletto. And that's it. Thanks for your company. There's more to come same time next week on The Beats and Interview. Till then, go safely and bye for now. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.